the playground at visitcalifornia.com. Beautiful and healthy looking eyes? It shouldn't be a compromise. Lumify Eye Illuminations, developed by the experts at Bausch & Lomb exclusively for the sensitive eye area. To cleanse, nourish, and brighten. Lumify Eye Illuminations, only in the eye care aisle. Tomorrow, it's Spilling the E.T. Couples Edition with Anna Paquin and Stephen Moyer. That was the least naughty you've ever been on camera. Mm. All righty then, let's keep the naughty and nice theme with Mr. Lenny Kravitz. Never been better than it is now. Happening now. The owners of the dogs that fatally killed a man last year are asking for their charges to be dismissed. We'll take you inside the courtroom for a hearing on what's going on in this case and what the judge decided. Last night's cold front made quite a contrast for our weather today and even for a few more days. Get ready for some below average mornings. We'll talk about how much cooler they'll be and how much rain we got last night in just a bit. The first and five fallout from a deadly dog attack. The attorneys for the dog's owners, Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider, in court today for a hearing related to last year's attack that left an 81 year old man dead. Lawyers trying to have those charges dismissed. And right now they're trying to put the blame on animal care services. So now let's take a look back at how we got here. Everything unfolded on February 24th of 2023. Ramon Najera was killed by at least two dogs that prosecutors say were owned by Christian Moreno. Najera's wife and firefighters who arrived to help the couple were also attacked. Officers arrest and charge Moreno. And then a week later, on March 1st, Abilene Schneider, Moreno's wife, is also arrested and charged in connection to the deadly dog attack. Almost six months later, the couple indicted. Moreno makes his first court appearance in September. Schneider makes her appearance on October 3rd. Leading today at 5, Erica Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom as Schneider is called to testify. They didn't tell me nothing. Abilene Schneider, along with yes. Christian Moreno, trying to get charges filed against them dismissed. Those charges include injury to the elderly and dangerous dog attack resulting in death. On February 24th last year, 81-year-old Ramon Nakera and his wife Janie were visiting a friend on Depla Street near Highway 90 in Couples Road. As they got out of their vehicle, two dogs owned by Schneider and Moreno attacked them. While Janie survived her injuries, Ramon didn't. The defense with the motions they filed are trying to shift blame on ACS, saying they dropped the ball after the dogs had previously been detained for other bite incidents and never deemed them as dangerous dogs. But the head of ACS says they did everything they could do by state law requirements. As for Schneider, she told the court after agreeing to pay the $200 fine to get the dogs out of quarantine in January 2023, ACS didn't give her any further instructions or guidelines to follow. I asked every person I spoke to that day, what else do I need to do? And they didn't tell me nothing. They said, just make sure King and Snow do not lick their wounds, get them wet. Um, other than that, they're good. You, they can go home. Judge Velia Mesa didn't rule on the motions filed by the defense, but will have her ruling by June 17th. As for the trial itself, we now have official dates. On August 30th, it will be jury selection, and then testimony is set to begin on September 9th. Both Moreno and Snyder will be tried together. At the Kidena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Switching gears now, we know that 18-year-old Demarion Smith is the person who was shot and killed over the weekend. SAPD says the deadly shooting happened Saturday morning in front of the Dollar Tree at the shopping center on East Houston off of New Braunfels Avenue. Now, investigators are saying that there was some type of altercation and that someone shot Smith in the chest. Officers were detained for several people, detained several people for questioning, but at this point, they still have not arrested anybody in that case. Now we know as many as three people are facing charges in connection with a house full of trouble. We're talking about marijuana and stolen cars, stolen guns. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that it found all that stuff early this morning while serving a warrant at the home. Now that's in the Five Palms neighborhood in the 9200 block of Port Victoria Street. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the team had been watching that property for some time and he says that when they went in there today, they were mainly looking for guns and yeah, they found them about a dozen of them. 
It's quite possible that they were going to be used to commit crimes here locally, but additionally, there, there is, uh, there, we've got some information that some of these weapons were making their way south. In other words, going across the border to Mexico. The sheriff says that some of the guns had been altered to make them fully automatic. He says the team also found a small amount of marijuana, several stolen cars, and even this, look, police gear. Investigators think that gear was stolen from a school police officer's car. Police say she had a knife, he had a gun, and things did not end well. Officers say an argument between a man and woman ended with that woman being taken to the hospital in critical condition. It apparently started in the 4300 block of Vance Jackson near Moss Rock, close to Loop 410 before 9 last night. According to the officers, the woman stabbed the man with a knife. He in turn shot her. Both then reportedly left the scene. Officers were able to locate them both on Briar Gate Drive at two different locations. The woman was taken to the hospital. No word on the man's condition. Police are still investigating. And, you know, rolling up to a red light with the window down made one driver an easy target for a man with a knife. Officers say that a tow truck driver stopped at a red light at I-10 and Wurzbach Road when the suspect walked up to him and without warning reached inside the truck and stabbed the driver in the arm. The driver quick, quickly rolled up that window, but instead of running off, we're told that he started, the suspect started banging on the window with the knife. The driver drove off, called police. Officers then say that they saw the suspect walking nearby. They arrested him, and now that person is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Severe weather blew through our area last night, bringing more than just rain. At least two homes caught fire after being struck by lightning. That's according to the San Antonio Fire Department. It happened in the 11,800 block of Braysview. That's not far from Blanco Road and Wurzbach Parkway on the north side. Fire crews say the lightning strike caused a dryer to start smoking in the home. The other lightning strike affecting an apartment with the fire spreading to an attic. We're told it took about 45 minutes to put out. No injuries reported, but about 12 people have been displaced. Okay, now you want to take a look back. Can we talk about what happened last night? Quite an event. The lightning put on a show here in San Antonio and also across Bear County. And a lot of you captured it and shared your images with us on KSAT Connect. Thank you very much for that. Now we want to show you a picture from uh, Artie that would be lightning near the tower of the Americas. Yeah, oh, I think I think we already it. saw that, okay. but we want to thank so many people who actually mm -hmm. shared videos mm -hmm. of all the heavy rain that fell. Here's a ring camera video of last night's rain event. Also, Pete a marble sized hail at Bitters and West Avenue. Video of hail hitting a hot tub cover at a home near Churchill High School. Yeah, now we also have a, a pick that heavy rail and hail up to a quarter over in uh, Bear County. If we could show that picture there, just a lot of stuff. Now we also, other people also sent us more pictures. A uh, trampoline, yeah, a family from uh, Randolph uh, base uh, were telling us that they saw that. They saw a tree down. They also saw some tree damage. So it was just a lot of, it was, it was widespread, a lot of people just saw some damage. Yeah, and uh, we watched it all through Adam Kasky, who was definitely on top of everything last night mm -hmm. when it came to those storms. Adam. Yeah, we had a combination of some pockets of large hail, a quarter to almost ping pong, ping pong ball size, and some wind gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour measured across various parts of the Alamo City, from Randolph to Lackland, 60 plus mile per hour gusts. Now you look at the rainfall and our weather watchers at Panna Maria, 1.2 inches. Bulverde, just over a trace, not that much on the south side of Bulverde. Bernie, 0.4 inches. Mica, 0.15. But Lavernia, nearly two inches. And Seguin, two inches of rain in Helen's backyard. You look at the authority radar 24 hour estimates. This is the 24 hour rainfall estimates from our uh, dual polarized radar. Bright green indicates at least half an inch. Dark green on the map indicates an inch. Once you get into the yellows, that's two inches or more of rain. And so there were some pockets here and there, especially closer to Seguin, of two inches or more of rainfall. Officially at the airport, storm total, 1.34 inches. So that's pretty good, pretty healthy for us. We need that, and the aquifer is up eight-tenths of a foot today, but we know we need more. Now this morning, 57 exactly average, but this afternoon, high of 74, below the average of 79. And we're gonna have some below average mornings in particular over the next few days. Hey, less wind this evening. We'll get into the wind and how much it's gonna pump the brakes and then cooler than average, even into the upper 50s by midnight. I'll see you in a few minutes.
All right, Adam, thank you. So, you know, that was here, but we have to remember we weren't the only ones dealing with this. Other parts of Texas to the East Coast also dealing with powerful dangerous storms and in some places they even turn deadly. Yeah, with the threat of tornadoes expected to continue for some into tonight. Laura Aguirre has the latest on the wild weather and where it is heading next. It's not a good day to be out on the road. Floodwaters high enough to creep into fire trucks and submerge smaller vehicles. Savage overnight storms swept over parts of Texas, a number of towns suffering damage to homes, businesses, trees, and power lines. More than 400 people have been assisting with water rescues in and around Kirbyville, say local fire officials. Um, Even some rescuers needed rescue. Sad to say, but we're stuck in the ditch. Torrential rain and high winds roared east along the Gulf Coast Wednesday, triggering dangerous flash floods and spawning multiple tornadoes. Parts of Texas and Louisiana are already under more than a foot of rain, with more expected at a rate of up to three inches an hour through the day. Multiple injuries, none major, were reported Wednesday afternoon after a suspected tornado touched down in Slidell, Louisiana, according to parish leaders there. The rain was all over the place. My car was shaking. Other vehicles wrecked. Power lines down. Worst case scenario you, uh, that you could imagine. The National Weather Service says wind gusts up to 80 miles an hour are possible in several areas. In Mississippi, officials are warning residents in cities like Jackson to brace for potentially intense tornadoes there as the storms move through. Forecasters predict these dangerous conditions will move across Florida's panhandle and north along the east coast and into the D.C. and Baltimore area Thursday. This might be the worst storm I've ever lived through. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. To a local business having troubles, Guillermo's Italian restaurant op opting to file for bankruptcy to avoid closing its doors. The Chapter 11 petition submitted Monday following a drop in revenue at Guillermo's two locations. The original location on McCullough Avenue, the one on Austin Street, has been open since 2021. The restaurant says the decision will actually help the business reorganize and move forward to maintain both of those locations. Oh, you know what that music means, Steve. I know, yeah. happening right now. It's Fiesta time. Folks are lining up to get their hands on the first of several KSAT Weather Authority medals. Our Justin Horn and Mia Montgomery are live at Desks Galore on Meadow Leaf, right near Marbach Road, as Fiesta excitement continues to grow. And I see Mia there all decked out with all her medals. Ready. Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah, the excitement definitely is growing. Again, we are at Desk Lore 410 and Marbach on the west side for the first Weather Authority medal giveaway. Are we excited to get some medals today? Yeah. Viva Fiesta, right? Here we are. There it is. I love that. I love the excitement. <laughs> And we've got plenty of chairs for folks to come in and desks to uh, come in and check <laughs> out here at Desk Galore. So we're excited to be here. We've already got a good group, and we're going to be unveiling the KSAT Weather Medal for the first time this season. The first time! So we have got 200 medals yes. to give away today. We still have wristbands left as well. So come on out. Mm -hmm. Coming up in the next block after the break, we're going to show you yes. what the Weather Authority Medal looks like, and it's pretty awesome this year. And we're going to be giving away those medals at 6 o'clock. You still have time to come out and join us, get a wristband, and you can get one of the medals and join us here Woo! as we celebrate Fiesta. Yeah! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. We'll check back in with you guys in just a few minutes. I mean, Des and Darth Vader. I know. What, that what more can you ask for out there, guys? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll check in with you a little bit later in this newscast. All right. We want to go to 281 at the quarry right now. Um, I, things seem to be moving smoothly in both directions. Uh, as they take a look at the access road there. Again, 281 at the quarry. And as you look up at 281, heavy traffic in both directions, but no major traffic tie-ups to tell you about. We'll be right back. I'm Myra Arthur, and coming up today on the News at 6, it is an issue a lot of us have to deal with. It's a hassle. It's a headache. It's health insurance. Understanding coverage, it's something else. It is something else, but understanding your health insurance coverage is necessary. In a new case that explains, we have put together a video glossary for you, an explanation of a lot of the terms you come across, things like copay, deductible, and more. Plus, we're breaking down the different types of plans that are available. Case that explains is on the news at six. 
Look forward to it. Thank you, Myra. Well, now the time to make your Fiesta collection one of the best for Fiesta. The first of many more Fiesta medal giveaways happening right now, and we have an unveiling. That's right. Now, there is a, there is a jingle, right, for desk galore. There's always something more yeah. at desk galore. Yeah. Today, it's medals. Now, you still have time to make it out to desk galore near Marbach Road to get the Weather Authority's Fiesta medal. They're free while supplies last. Justin Horn and Mia Montgomery are out there live, and they are showing off this year's medal. Let's see it. I, I love that jingle, by the way. <laughs> but since we're at Desk Galore, we're going to unveil this in a Desk Galore kind of way. By so coming over here. This beautiful desk this you see here. Desk. Here we go. Let's Here's see. the unveiling. Drum roll. Oh, there it is. Oh, yes. yes. So the butte. this year is the face of our KSAT Weather Authority. Yes, app, it is. Which is amazing. Yep, it, uh, it is, it's a pretty one this year. It really is. And so if you yep. pan over here, this is what yep. you're gonna see again. We are at Desk Galore, 410 Marbach on the west side. We still have wristbands to give there away. Giving away 200 medals at six o'clock. This is Miss Denise. Denise, what time did you get here today? I arrived at 1.15 and my friend arrived at 1.30. Wow. That is dedication. Are we excited to get some medals? Oh, yes. Be some of the first in San Antonio yeah. to have the Weather Authority medal? Yes, we're giving them away at six o'clock. Still time to come out. Join us at Desk Galore. Yep, we'll catch y'all again coming up on the news at six. All right, I have to say that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool medal. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I can't wait to. Now the jingles in my head. And Hold once it those in my hands. Are in yeah. my head. They don't leave. <laughs> You're welcome. You're <laughs> yes, welcome, Kasky. Look you know, at those skies now. Yeah, and uh, tomorrow I'll be live with my friends at Cowboys Ache Air Conditioning and Heating for a special Therm Thurs and an unveiling. All right, my, medal. my Your first own medal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is pertinent to current events this week. Yeah, that's always one of the highlights of my Fiesta year. Oh, I know Seeing it is. your medal. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not kidding, because okay, you have creative medals. So that's Thank why you. I'm not, I'm actually being sincere, you know, with you. Mark this day, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> mark your calendar, and I'm not kidding. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Aww. Okay, we could just go back to news now. I'll give you a little extra time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but it's going to be fun. My first giveaway is on Friday, so I'll announce that location uh, tomorrow. Less wind tonight. Cooler than average mornings for a few days, but the humidity returns this weekend. That'll mean warmer mornings and some areas of fog. But let's talk about the wind. It was howling out there today, not just during the storms last night, 60 to 67 miles per hour measured in and around San Antonio at our official climate observing sites. But you look at the most recent wind gusts, 39 miles per hour, San Antonio, Rock Springs up to 40 miles per hour, New Braunfels, 39 miles per hour, Catula gusting up to 43, clear sky, non thunderstorm wind gusts out there. We're noticing them. We're feeling them. These winds will pump the brakes. The gusts will be maybe up to 20 miles per hour, 15 to 20 later on this evening. But you look at the steady, the sustained wind. Once the sun sets, we get to 10 o'clock. Sustained wind, nine miles per hour. whoop de doo Seven, eight miles per hour into tomorrow morning. So not as windy. The wind's calming down. But that wind out of the northwest pushing in that drier, less humid, crisp air. Dew points right now. 30s closer to the Rio Grande, 40s locally, and this is that kind of fall like air in place. And we know days like these are numbered this time of year. The what we call return flow, the wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to return. Return flow, and it's a common flow. It's going to be back in business by this weekend. By Sunday, sticky outside, that's going to last into next week. And that's going to lead to some morning fog again. Here's the upper level system that gave us our much needed rainfall. And by the way, coming up at six, I'll show you the drought monitor along with how much rain fell and where in our drought stricken areas. But now the action is pushing off to the east. It was in New Orleans earlier today, and now it's pushing closer to Alabama and Georgia and even the panhandle of Florida. Temperature wise, across our straight, beautiful Alpine. 72 degrees, 71 in Midland, 67 in Lubbock, Laredo up to 87 in Brownsville at 90. The typical temp temperature spread across Texas when you get a cold front. Right now, officially 74 at the airport. Tomorrow morning, right near 50 degrees, even upper 40s in the hill country. So feeling a little bit of a chill tomorrow morning for this time of year. By noon, we're at 77, then a high temperature 
of 83. Nothing but sunshine throughout the day tomorrow and overall pretty comfortable the next few days. Uh, notice Friday morning still in the lower 50s. A few storm chances return by early next week. That's a good looking forecast though. It right is. There. Yes, it is. You know what I love to say? Spurs beat, I don't know, enter the team name. Right, and it was really good to see the Spurs really beat a team oh, yeah. by double digits. That was awesome to see last night. Julian Champigny is a huge reason why that happened. And let's talk about Mamu, who crashed the boards big time last night. Coming up. Sixteen boards? Yeah. Julian Champagny with some love for Mamu after he grabbed 16 boards last night in Big Board Sports. First star rookie Victor Wimbanyama will not play at the OKC Thunder tonight. The Spurs are sitting him out after he logged 31 minutes last night at the Memphis Grizzlies. Wimby had 18 points, 7 blocks, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists in the Spurs win at the FedEx Forum. Julian Champagny started and he added 17 points. The Spurs take it 102 to 87. And you know what? Julian's game is really working right now. Yeah, I mean, I feel a lot comfortable. Obviously, some guys are out, so the role kind of expands. Um, as well as the playing time, but I mean, coaching, coaching, my teammates have been telling me the same thing all year, just, you know, shoot the ball when it comes, shoot it. Um, obviously, all year I preach to you guys that I'm going to play my role to the best of my ability, and some games it's scoring a lot, and some games it's playing defense, you know, so. Sandro Mamokelashvili started last night. He had a career-high 16 rebounds along with 11 points as the Spurs snapped a 13-game losing streak to the Grizzlies. Just want to crush the glass every time. Um, I feel like I move a lot and I try to position myself uh, a lot of times uh, where I can get the rebound. Um, I'm happy I had 11 points with it and not nine. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good. Just I want to get as many rebounds as I can. So it, it was great to just go out there and compete. And, you know, as I said, heart is everything. I got a big heart, so I'm going to go out and get it. The Thunder played last night, and they rallied from a 20-point deficit to beat Sacramento 112-105. to 105. Shea Gilgis-Alexander scored 40 in his return from injury. OKC hasn't been playing quite as well the past five or six weeks compared to when they were really clicking before the All-Star break. Um, Post-All-Star break, you know, I think we've been a little bit worse offensively, you know, rating wise, maybe two points and a little bit worse defensively, maybe one point, maybe even less. Um, and that's a 25 game sample. You know, we weren't humming you know, since all star break the way we were, uh, you know, the end of December. But um, it's very hard to sustain that rhythm for 82 games. And, you know, you can grow from the dips and that's what we want to do. OKC okay, will host SA tonight at 7. Highlights on the night beat, and we'll be right back after the break. Thanks for keeping us company for the last 30 minutes. Yep, we'll see you back here at 6. World News is next.